Hey, welcome everyone. Um, as you're joining the, the waiting room, we're going to give it another minute before we kick this off um, to let to give everyone time to join. And um, then we'll then we'll get started. So let's give it give it about another minute. All right, well, let's just jump in. Welcome and thanks for, for joining us. Uh, we're going to uh, talk about um, engagement, convenience, and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, and I, we appreciate you joining us with, with you know, the, the chaos that's happening inside your organizations right now. Uh, we, we should be able to, to, to make it well worth your time. Um, a little bit of housekeeping before we jump in. Um, if we get if we don't have a lot of questions and we end a little early, uh, we'll let we'll buy you some of your time back. Um, I will be asking some questions at the end, however. So if you look on um, your go to webinar control panel on the right hand side, you'll see some drop down bars that are in gray. And one of those is questions. Please feel free to uh, add your questions there. We'll get to uh, them at the end of this this broadcast. In addition. Uh, with with everything that's going on, we want to make sure that we provide you with ways to to access this um, after uh, the webinar is over. So we will be sending an email out with the recording to everyone who registered for the webinar, as well as posting it on the driving sales community so that you can you can get some discussions going and kind of continue the conversation. Um, we're going to be joined today by Haley Sontag and Matt Boyce. Um, um, let me just do a quick introduction of them and we'll let them jump right in. Haley's uh, worked in many areas of marketing at Podium, and she focuses on driving demand through industry-specific publications and advertising. She received her BS from Brigham Young University in Marketing, and she has a passion around understanding the market through research and customer feedback. Uh, in her free time, she enjoys trying new restaurants and seeing the latest movies. And Matt heads up the Demand Generation Department at Podium. Um, Matt has a BA in communications from Brigham Young University and has a wealth of knowledge in digital marketing from his time working at Adobe and as well as Lilly. So uh, once again, let's let's turn the time over to them. We'll let them uh, present the, the material and um, we'll go from there. Take it away. Perfect. Thank you so much, Bart. We're really excited to be here today and, and talk about talk about this topic. As you know, the, the title is Search to Sold, How the Amazon Effect Influences Your Customers. And we, we've talked about this a lot in the past, how customers are, are valuing convenience over basically anything else. And we've seen that ring true even more so in the last few weeks with everything that's going on. So we're excited to jump into it, talk about how the customer journey has changed, and then hopefully give your dealership some, some tips of how you can adapt to the customer journey and, and make things more convenient for your customers in general as well as in these times we're, we're in right now. So I will head it, I will pass it over to Matt to start us off. Sorry, Matt, are you on mute? Sorry about that, everybody. Here I was just rambling on. Um, uh, I'm, I'm excited to hop in. Uh, odds are, since you, uh, since you registered for this webinar, the world has changed a little bit. And we've, we've also adjusted our, our slides to talk through that and how you can improve your, your customer journey um, without maybe shaking uh, quite as many hands. And so, um, what we want to talk about today is, is almost three pieces. First, can your customers find you? 
Second, are you making it easier for customers to connect, chat, or even ask questions? And then are you creating long-lasting, trustworthy customer relationships? Um, we've identified a couple pain points along these journeys, or along this journey, and I think even uh, even all the changes with coronavirus have, uh, have amplified some of those changes. So first I wanna jump in on what the customer journey used to be. It wasn't that long ago that the customer journey was relatively brief and fast where uh, we started with uh, awareness, basically a lot of that broadcast advertising would bring people to your dealership. Essentially, they're making evaluations between one, two, maybe three options. Um, they're buying and then you retain them uh, for, uh, as long as they have that vehicle. <clears throat> um, however, now the technology is redefining that customer journey. As phones have become more integral in people's lives, um, really, almost 95% of people uh, worldwide own a cell phone. And um, Google has experienced just exponential growth in the number of, of near me searches. If you want to jump to the next slide for me. Um, <clears throat> but, but this isn't just impacting a customer, it's also impacting the business. So, um, as a as a dealership, almost 84% of, of dealerships are using some sort of a digital platform to provide customers with, with information. And, and to that end, I, I wonder what the other 16% are doing. Um, and then 79% um, are using some sort of a digital tool to communicate with, with their customers. And that's just making it uh, quicker and easier to communicate versus, um, versus picking up the phone and, and calling. Uh, really, what we're seeing is as dealers are able to adapt this technology, um, <clears throat> uh, really it's, it's that business who becomes uh, technologically advanced faster is, is the business that's winning in, in today's changing economy. So if we look at that modern customer journey of what people are experiencing today, uh, it's not just a single line item of, of bullet point three isn't just internet. Um, it changes where the way that they discover new vehicles and, and new features that they're looking for, it changes the way that they're buying and the way they're, they're experiencing uh, your dealership. Um, and then after they're purchasing, um, they're, they're doing a lot more to promote their experience to their, to their friends and their family. So we'll go through each of these stages individually and what businesses can do to ensure a, a convenient journey along the way. And going along with what Matt has said, obviously we'll we'll go through each of these these stages, and I want you to to realize how how it has changed, and specifically how technology has drastically altered the customer journey for the customer, and then also how your dealership can can use that as use technology as well to to adapt to that. Let's see if we can go on to the next slide. There we go. So the first step is discover, and that's getting found online. The journey really starts with a customer searching on their channel of choice. It used to be the phone book or maybe asking a family, family member or friend for a recommendation, but that's really shifted. Usually nowadays, a life event happens that facilitates a search, like the need for a new car, for example, or the need for work done on their car. What the customer will most likely do is search on their phone, car dealership near me. This has created what Google calls micro moment. That's basically when the customer knows what they want, they have the intent to buy, they just need to be connected with the right business. And that's why it's so important to be where your customers are searching for you. Show up on the Google Maps pack, have good reviews so that they can find you. Your customers are looking for a dealership. When they type in dealership near me, they're looking for a dealership. And if they can't find you, they're not, they're not, you're not going to get their business. How do you be where your customers are? The first step is claiming your business. This is free and really easy. It's something that you can do today. Make sure that you have some presence 
on major search engines, especially Google, but also being social media profiles, industry specific directories. Again, put yourself in your customer's shoes and think where are they going to be searching for you and then make sure you have some sort of presence there. It doesn't have to be a large presence, just make sure you have, your, your name shows up when they search for a dealership near me and especially if they search for your specific dealership, make it easy for them to find you. A little pro tip we have here and something to look for when you're either creating these directory listings or updating them is to make sure that your name, address, and phone number which is also known as the NAP, that they exactly match on each directory profile as well as your website. Say, for example, you're located on 123 ABC Street and you spell out street S-T-R-E-E-T on your website, make sure that that's spelled the exact same on your Google My Business listing, on your Facebook page, on all of your directory listings, because what this will do is it will tell Google that this is all one business, which will build credibility both in the eyes of Google but also in the eyes of your customers. We're going to delve a little bit deeper into Google, as that is one of the most preferred search engines. And we want to talk about the Google Map Pack. If somebody searches for car dealerships near me or car dealerships in Salt Lake City, Utah, adding that location marker is going to trigger local search results and bring up the Google Map Pack. The majority of clicks to either a business's website or to contact them are going to be to dealerships that are showing up on the map pack. So it's really important to get your dealership on there. Again, the first step is to claim your business listing and then enter and update information. Well, that's kind of the first step. But then the next step is going to be boosting your ranking with online reviews. You not only want to get on the Google map pack, you want to make sure you get to the top of it. And nobody really knows exactly what and how much Google's algorithm takes into account when determining search ranking. But we do know that reviews play a huge part in ranking specifically for local search. That's when, again, that's when somebody searches for car dealership near me or car dealership in a specific city. And you can see some of the stats we have here are pretty compelling. I want to bring your attention to this last one. It mentions that consumers won't engage with a business with less than a 3.3 star rating. Something to keep in mind here, though, is if they search for best dealership near me, and they include that word best, what will happen is Google will automatically filter out any business with less than a 4 star rating. So if your dealership has a 3.8 star rating on Google, the customer might be willing to engage with you but if they search for best dealership, you won't be showing up where they're looking for you, so they won't even have the option. Obviously, your star rating is really important on Google, but that's not the only thing that Google looks at. There are actually four categories or areas that Google takes into account in regards to online reviews. And those are quality, so your star review or your star rating. That also includes the content in your reviews. So quality, quantity, recency, and frequency. Because of all of these four categories, it's really important to make sure you're getting reviews on a consistent basis instead of just large quantities at once. And we'll talk a little bit later about how you can get more reviews, but just a little hint, it's about asking every customer for a review to make sure they're coming in on that consistent basis. Okay, the, the next step on this modern customer journey is the convert phase, essentially where you're, where you're winning more leads and, um, and sparking that initial, initial interest. A big piece of this is a near me search. So 72% of consumers who do a near me search will visit a brick and mortar store. Um, and, and this talks about proximity, but also the, the point that's, that's often overlooked is, uh, the amount of time where typically that visit happens within within hours or days. And so when somebody is making that near me search, they, they intend to act and, and go. And so from those search results, you wanna make it incredibly convenient to, to reach you and to ask questions or to get in touch with you. Um, so make sure you've got a clear call to action to your website where, um, where they can come look at your inventory 
And then when they reach out, make sure that you are responding quickly and, and on their channel. <clears throat> so, so let's jump into how to make it convenient for your customers to reach you. Um, <clears throat> as recently as two weeks ago, your goal probably was to get them into the showroom to shake hands and to, and to talk with them as, as much as possible. Now, based on uh, different situations, these, these messaging channels are even more important. So what you want to do is make sure that all those channels are open and activated. Don't, uh, don't leave any of them turned off. So you want a way to be able for your customers to text message you. There's also Google Business Chat, and there's resources on our website. If, if you haven't enabled these, we can, we can show you how to do that. Uh, Facebook Messenger, and then even Instagram uh, direct messages. Mm -hmm. Um, and then make sure you've got some sort of a, a chat solution on your website where people can can reach out and and ask questions. Some of the things we've seen our customers doing is they're using these tools to grab somebody's interest. And then what they're offering through these messaging platforms is saying, <clears throat> if you're looking for um, model ABC, come to the dealership and we'll basically do curbside service where I will make sure it's pulled up at the front. Um, uh, I'll have everything ready for you. Text me when you're here and I'll come out into the parking lot and meet you outside. And so um, they're able to do a lot of that work without coming in, waiting in your showroom and, uh, um, and being exposed to, to quite a few strangers. We've also seen a couple instances of, um, once you've established uh, that somebody's really in the, in the mode to make a purchase, um, especially with all the OEM incentives that are happening right now. Um, we've seen some of our customers uh, take a vehicle to their customer, let them test drive it um, from their own driveway and, and make sales that way. So, mm -hmm. so those can be really powerful tools. And essentially, this, this way to, to let pe uh, your customers message you is really opening, opening that door. Um, so next, let's talk about your website, where uh, how can you add a, a clear call to action uh, on your website? Um, really, what, what you want to make sure that they, they do is that there isn't so many different directions that they can go that they get a little bit lost. So you want to be concise, offer some sort of value, and then provide a clear path to, uh, to a conversion. So your website's a huge channel. 95% of website visitors don't convert simply because they cannot find the information they need. Um, that can be pretty alarming when you spend as much time and money optimizing your website as, as you have. What we see is that offering a chat solution takes that conversation from just them browsing to them engaging in some way. And so oftentimes that question uh, is, is that they've seen everything on your website. They just, they have some questions specifically of, is this car on your on your lot right now is this car still available? Um, do you do service X Y Z? Do you have this type of accessory that uh, that you could offer inside uh, inside your service department? And so they want to say, does your website and does your business work for me? Now, when those messages come in, the 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 next key step is to ensure that you can uh, respond quickly. So um, I think it's important to have somebody in your building messaging or monitoring those messages. Um, and so some of it can be automated, but, but not all, so that uh, you're able to identify those really important, uh, really important questions. And then directly address your customers' questions. You can, you can even use photos or videos where you can basically take a picture of, of that car or vehicle and send it back and say, yes, I, I have that truck here on my lot. Um, would you like me to hold it for you? Um, and then one way to manage all of those messages is to use some sort of a, a interaction management platform um, where you're able to respond to all leads across all channels. And then it's important to democratize those messages. Uh, I talked about having somebody on site. I think it's important to have a lot of people on site where you may have multiple sales reps, even even somebody at the front desk, and maybe somebody in finance all. Met, uh, all looking at those responses and so that you can uh, delegate and, and respond to those messages quickly. And that leads really well into this next stage that we have, which is purchase. And 
Matt was talking about how you can deal with these extra communication, why you should open these different channels for your customers. So we talked a lot about messaging, and we want to really hit this home, uh, especially with everything that's going on. Um, it's so important. It's crucial to your business to connect the online and offline experience, even if the traffic is running a little bit low. Again, this, this stat, which um, just it says a little bit more about texting, is 90% of cu customers prefer texting to traditional methods of communication. And another statistic we have is that while 90% of customers prefer texting in general, more than two thirds of customers prefer texting to businesses that they're associating with. So texting is so important to your customers, but that doesn't mean that it has to be less convenient for your dealership. Because if you have these people messaging in from all the different channels, it can seem overwhelming and may seem like it would add work to your dealership to have to sign in to your Google My Business listing, to Facebook, to all these different channels various times in the day to see someone messaged you. But this is a great opportunity for you to also be leveraging technology to keep up with these changing preferences and make it convenient for your dealership, which will also make it convenient for your customers with connecting the online and offline experiences. So here are some examples we have of how businesses have used messaging effectively. Uh, you can schedule appointments, send pictures of inventory, like Matt was saying, provide updates, uh, whether it's delivery updates or maybe their, their cars in the service portion of your dealership, answer questions, identify problems. And one that's not on here that I think is even more important now than some of these is collect payments via messaging. We've seen dealerships do this and it has been very effective and very convenient for their customers, not only for in general, but especially at this time when people are weary of being close to people and, and touching the same things as other people. So we've, we've seen auto dealerships use payments through messaging for deposits or on the service side for someone getting their car fixed. But whatever a customer is going to do with engaging with you, that can be digitally, try to do as much of that as you can. Um, and like I was saying, we don't want to add work to your business, but one thing we've seen actually with some of Podium's customers is that they've saved on average four to five hours a week by shifting some communication from phone calls to messaging. Phone and email are still great means of communication, but if you're calling somebody and that that's sort of all you can do. You call them, you wait maybe 15 seconds for the phone to ring, and then they don't answer. So you leave maybe a 15-second message, uh, and then you hang up. So it's you know it can be it can be a while, and if they do answer, then you're just talking to that customer, going back and forth. But with messaging, you can send a quick message to one customer, and you don't have to sit there waiting for them to respond. Messaging is asynchronous, which means that the two parties don't have to be communicating at the same time. So you can be messaging several different customers or potential customers at the same time and have them respond at their convenience. Some more tips we have here is you want to personalize these messages. Say hello. Include their name. Directly address their question. Don't be afraid to show some personality and, and ask if there's anything that you can do to help them. Remember that people are, are pretty good at telling if they're talking to a human being or to a robot. So, of course, always keep it professional, but don't be afraid to use this opportunity to build a relationship with the customer. Yeah, if, you're, if your email inbox looks anything like mine, you're getting messages to say, um, buy this item online and have it shipped in, in uh, two days. Um, we will deliver your groceries to you or pre-order your burrito and just pick it up uh, curbside. Um, even, even I've heard of uh, bars mixing drinks and, and uh, things like that, uh, you know, online or over the phone so that uh, people don't have to come in and, and wait in the store. And so wow. um, it's your ability to make that purchase incredibly seamless is, uh, is just paramount. And, and essentially that's why, some of these e-commerce stores are, are doing so well is they just make that experience so frictionless. 
So you've made a purchase, uh, you sold a car. Now let's let's figure out how to get more uh, understanding from those customers, or really how to get feedback. And so um, half of shoppers feel like their feedback just falls flat and doesn't get acted upon. Um, a couple ways to address that is is ask for feedback in the moment where um, if if a customer feels like that feedback isn't it, isn't going to be acted on, then they just won't even leave it at all. But if you're able to say, hey, we really value your feedback, we'll send you a survey um, within an hour of this conversation. Uh, please give us uh, your, your, your experience and your perspective. Uh, all of a sudden, your, your response rates really, uh, really jump. And then because of, because of the lack of uh, interaction, some people feel like it's very one-sided. So if you can enable a two-way uh, feedback collection where sort of uh, as demonstrated in the text thread on the right, where the responses are dynamic and, um, and rely on whatever response came before, those, those customers feel a lot more willing to engage and, and respond. And, and essentially your business wants the, wants the feedback. You need to know what your customers are, are valuing or, or how they're experiencing your business. And so the more, uh, the more barriers you're, you can remove, the, the better off your business will be. So um, I think timing is, is critical. So I recently had a rock chip repaired on my, on my uh, windshield. And I had a fantastic experience. They, they gave me great service. Uh, at the end of my visit, one of the technicians came up and asked me if, I'd, if I wouldn't mind completing a survey. And I, I thought, hey, this is, this is what I talk about on webinars even. I'm, I'm happy to help. And I left the store. My problem had been uh, resolved and I just didn't think about it. And almost a week later, I finally got an email asking to uh, fill out a, a feedback survey. And I thought, I promised them I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to try. And that survey took me almost seven minutes to complete. And, um, and I just thought, there's got to be so many people that are not following through uh, as much as I was uh, in that specific experience. So here's, here's a couple tips. Um, we talked about collecting feedback through a, a two-way text message. We, we think that's really paramount. Um, going, uh, going back to when you make that transaction, Asking for that feedback up front is really is really valuable, and asking for the type of feedback you're looking for to say, we want to know how our sales team treated you. Please, um, please give us feedback on that. Or uh, did you have a negative experience in this, or or anything like that? Um, when you get feedback, respond as, as quickly as possible so they know that's a a real channel and not just going into a a black box. And then. Some of your customers will have a, a negative experience. It's, it's impossible to please everybody. And so rather than fighting them or saying, no, that's, you know, your experience was rare, uh, simply validate and, and say, we, we want to, uh, we want to fix this going forward. What else can you tell us? And then make sure you're actively listening where, um, again, you're not, um, preparing a, a rebuttal, but you're trying to understand their, their situation and, uh, and what that could have or how that could have gone differently. Um, and then make sure that the solution you're offering is, is really resolving that issue and, and fixing that problem. And at the end, um, ask if the customer is satisfied uh, with your business and, and were there things that they could have done, that they could have done better. Um, and so you know how uh, you've heard all the statistics about being more expensive about uh, acquiring a new customer, but for most industries, it's between five and 25 25 times more expensive to acquire a new customer than retain an existing customer. And so you want to keep your existing customers coming back and then, um, and keeping them very loyal over time where they buy their next vehicle with you and their family's next vehicle with you. And so, uh, by collecting that feedback, you go from just being a business to being their business that, that they know you listen to their feedback and, and want to hear what, uh, what they have to say. And that is right into the last um, the last step that we have, and that is oh, let's see. The uh, deck that is, is doing something to, weird. It skipped ahead. Yeah, the, let's see if we can get to the right slide here. Yeah, the last step is to 
transform those customers into promoters. So like Matt was saying, you get feedback from them. If they do have a bad experience, you've remedied that situation. And now you want them to keep coming back and back again, just like Matt was saying. You want to transform them into promoters where they're coming back, but they're also telling their friends and family via word of mouth or now that most people are practicing social distancing, they're telling hundreds of strangers online about their experience with your business, um, which is us just coming back to how important online reviews are. Again, the, the stat we have is 90% of customers prefer texting to traditional forms of communication. And we're going to, I know we talked about how we were going to circle back to reviews. I'm not sure why the deck is giving us some, some problems, but as we hinted earlier, your business can increase the quantity, quality, recency, and frequency. So those four things that Google looks at when determining search rankings for local search. You can increase all of those things by asking every customer for a review. We know that you know, close to 80% of customers are willing to leave a review if you ask them. And that's similar to Matt's experience with feedback. He was willing to leave feedback, and he actually did follow through with, the, with giving the feedback and filling out the seven-minute survey. But most customers, although they're willing, they, they hit barriers that stop them from leaving reviews. Maybe they don't know how to do it. Maybe it's a too much of a time commitment and they don't want to take the time to learn how to leave a review. So they won't actually leave it. But here are some tips you can use to encourage more people to leave reviews. Number one is ask customers to leave a review while they're in person. So maybe between them, maybe while you're filing financing and they have a little bit of downtime, you can ask them to leave a review. You don't want to pressure them and, and be right there with them, but you can tell them how they'll be getting it, how long it will take them, and then send them a text to review, use a text to review tool to send them a link to the exact place that they need to leave a review. This makes it convenient and easy and eliminates those barriers that usually stop the majority of your happy customers to leave reviews. But if you do most if of I the can... work for them, yeah, go ahead, Matt. If I can jump in, sorry about that. Um, one of the things that I, I wanted to call out is there's a difference between uh, your feedback, which is internal facing, where you want to know how you can improve your business, versus a review, which is public facing. And so your your ability to generate both of those is going to be just vital, where um, you want the you want the feedback and a constant stream of feedback to, to know uh, how your reps are, are treating your customers. But then you want this constant stream of public reviews so that new customers can more easily more easily find you so that's that's uh, I meant to call it the difference between the two yeah and that's really important to understand too because feedback you're that's more internal you're you're just asking them for their opinion hopefully they give it to you but sometimes if a customer has a bad experience and you don't get feedback from them they'll just go straight online and tell everyone how horrible of an experience you had, um, which can, it can hurt a lot of businesses and can hurt your star rating on Google. But with asking every customer for a review and making it easy for everyone to leave a review, a happy, silent majority of your customers can leave reviews online and your reputation online can actually be an accurate picture of the service that you provide instead of just having a slew of reviews from the unhappy customers that aren't quite as common. And with, with the online reviews, we know that businesses are run by human beings, so it's not going to be a perfect experience for every single customer. You, and every business is going to get negative reviews. It's not something that you have to be scared of because if you're getting reviews from every customer, we know that the, the positive reviews will outweigh the negative because you're offering a great experience for your customers. Well, if you do get a negative review, make sure you respond to them, take the high road, and respond on that platform. If someone leaves you a negative review on Google, make sure you respond right then, personalize your comments, and then take it offline. 
so that people who are searching for your dealership in the future, if they read your negative reviews, they see that you care and you're prepared to offer remedies, but by taking it offline, it doesn't become a public spectacle. But all we want is for future people to to see that you care about the experience that you, you're giving your customers. Going along with what Matt was saying, feedback is private, reviews are public, but with both of them, you can use them to look for patterns and reoccurring issues in your customer journey or in some of your process feeds. If you're getting a lot of feedback about a specific employee or a specific location or a specific part in the journey, you can use that to turn negative feedback into teachable moments and work with your team, collaborate, figure out how to fix it and fix it for future customers so you don't have to get negative reviews and then fix those. You can just fix the process and make it smoother and more convenient for your customers. And especially now, I know you know, here at Podia, we're working from home, we're working remotely, so it's become even more important for us to communicate with our team. So if that's the case for your dealership, if not everyone is working in the office at the same time, you want to make sure you're communicating with your coworkers to help fix these problems and, and find strategies to make your processes better. I'll go ahead and summarize some of the talking points that we went through today uh, as we as we gear up for our uh, question and answer session. So uh, as a reminder, your prospective customers are sitting at home. Um, many of them are doing online shopping, they're watching TV, they're seeing commercials, and, and they've been wanting that new vehicle for a little while. All of a sudden, there's some really powerful incentives and, and uh, interest rates are a little lower. And they're thinking, should I, you know, should I engage with that dealership? And so make sure that you've got content out where your customers are. Maybe uh, um, you're making some extra social posts or a couple, uh, a couple of new advertisement placements. Um, and then make sure that your review game is, is strong, where people are, um, where people are seeing, seeing what other customers have said about your business. Next, your customers are gonna wanna reach out and ask that question where they say, do you have this in stock or, is there a way I could come test drive this? And, and you want some quick, easy way to communicate with them. On your profiles, if you have the capability to do curbside service, or if you have the ability to uh, let them text you when they arrive so you come out and they don't have to wait in, in the waiting room, make sure that's displayed as you're communicating with them so they know that's an option. Um, and that's, that's going to help across all your channels. And then as you're as you are uh, helping your customers make a, make a purchase, make sure you ask for feedback. Uh, you wanna know as quickly as possible while that, while that experience is fresh in their mind, what they thought. And then try to remedy those negative experiences quickly so that, uh, so that, that experience doesn't spread. Either A, so they don't, uh, they don't go broadcast that to the world, or B, so that you can fix that situation so it doesn't happen to your next customer uh, who's arriving later today. And then, you want, you want reviews from those same happy customers. Make it very easy for them to leave that review and then go ahead and respond to the review. Uh, each of those boosts your online rankings and so you're gonna show up higher in, in search results. And then as a team, uh, your, your buyers today may be, you may have less general foot traffic, but the people that are coming in are, are probably significantly more interested in making a purchase. And so you have the time now to uh, almost give them that white gloves treatment and make sure you're collaborating and communicating as a team to, uh, to deliver those, those high quality experiences. And then the final plug is to uh, bring all of those channels and, and communications into one shared centralized dashboard, uh, which, which is exactly what, uh, what Podium does and, and what we can offer. And so with that, we're, we're ready to jump into our question and answers. All right, thanks Haley, thanks Matt. If, if, if anyone has any questions, go ahead and post them in the question box so that we can get a, a, an idea of that. Um, one of the things that, um, I was, that, that was asked, and it's one of the things that we always reiterate at the end, is it said, someone said, I was 20 minutes late in joining, um, is it gonna be recorded? Yes, 
We recorded the webinar. It will go out to your in, to inboxes of anybody who's registered. We'll also make it available inside the driving sales community. So uh, we, we'll, we'll be able to, to make sure that you get that. There's a lot of, of, of really good information that you guys provided for us. I want to focus on a couple of things real quick. First of all, I, I love this concept of, of curbside service, and, and there's been a lot of talk about you know leveraging um, Google My Business as a way to communicate to consumers that that the changes that have been made at the dealership, both from a health standpoint as well as from a convenience standpoint. Can can you kind of reiterate some of the different ways, um, or from a communication channel, so how how you would you know advocate that dealers make sure their Google My Business is at a place where they can get those communications? Yeah, I can take this one. So. Um, you can you can edit your frequently asked questions uh, on your Google My Business page. You can make a um, you can make a post on Google that outlines this. And um, and so there's a couple ways you can optimize your your Google listing. Uh, many of those chat pods that pop up on your website, you can customize those messages as well. And so in that chat pod, you can say. Um, you know, we're doing curbside service, so you don't need to come into the showroom. Or I've even seen, um, depending on your website provider, you might be able to create a little ribbon or prompt across the top that um, that says, we do curbside service, text this number to, to schedule your appointment. Um, and so there's a, there's a handful of ways. It just depends on what your, what your capabilities are. Um, but really, as many places as you can as you can list that capability, uh, the better off you'll be. Excellent. Um, so let, let's talk a little bit about um, the, one of the things that always comes up when we when text comes up is the the, the laws and the compliance of, of texting, and we know the value. Um, at least I, I think we all know the value of having it coming through the dealership versus from some of these individual cell phones. This liability is one of them. Um, but if you want to, uh, what's the best way to get the customer's permission so that you can, if you've had a conversation with someone in the past, or, or you want to work with them further, that you can text them? Yeah, that's a great question. It's one that we get, we actually get that question pretty frequently. But the whole point of opening the texting or other messaging channels of communication is to make it more convenient for your customers. So if somebody does come into the dealership and say they haven't chatted in beforehand, so that's the first interaction you have with them, you can just ask them what their preferred channel of communication is. Let them know, hey, we offer texting as a form of communication. Is that most convenient for you or is there another channel that's more convenient? And if, if messaging isn't most convenient for them, Find the channel that is. So the point is to communicate with them however they prefer. But if it is their preferred channel, then you can just let them know, hey, we'll be sending you messages with updates, and you feel free to ask us any questions. Let them know that it won't be used for spam purposes, and then you can ask their number from there. As far as the, the legal aspect of it goes, if a customer messages you first, you're free you have implied consent, so you're, you're free to respond to them, but you want to be careful not to offer any marketing materials and, and keep it as a conversation. Put yourself in their shoes. If they want, if they have a question, answer the question. Uh, give them the information that they need. Uh, but that's kind of the best way that we've seen of, of getting there. Their number of permission to text them is, is being upfront with them and ask, simply asking them. I think one of one of the things that you know we could we could kind of play a drinking game, Haley, with as many times as you said convenience. But I think that that's one of the things that we've seen from this webinar, and and something I think <laughs> is going to become very apparent as we move forward, uh, and, and with our operations is the the convenience factor, um, and and how with you know with what you're saying with this curbside service or you know delivery in house or. That the ways that we can that we can communicate and leverage convenience and make it easier for for the customer to do business and make them more comfortable in their in their in the in the situation. Yeah, definitely, and and that was kind of the the whole point. I, I we definitely could do a drinking game with how many times I said convenient because that is 
what's most important to customers always, but especially with, with what's been going on in recent weeks. And, and that's what the Amazon effect is, is people can go online, search for toothpaste or whatever it is, click on one and it's delivered directly to their door in two days. And that same expectation has bled into all industries and it's bled into the auto industry where people want convenient interactions. They want to be able to get the information that they need and communicate with people that's convenient for them. Definitely. Yep. Well, um, I, if that's all the questions that we have, um, well, here's one more. Um, our store has recently merged two dealerships together and this person would like to make some changes to Google My Business. Do you have any connection or number we could connect with somebody in Google to figure it out? I know this is a problem, especially if someone leaves the dealership with the password to try to get to try to get some changes made. Do you guys have any insight on and how this individual can can become the admin of their GMB page and make some changes? Yeah, that's another great question. If you um, search for your Google My Business listing and you see that it's already there or it's already been um, yeah, it's already been verified for you. You can you can re-verify it with getting a uh, postcard sent to your physical address with a verification code, and then you enter that code and you'll have full admin access. Uh, we can reach out to this person individually too to kind of walk you through the, the process. We have some um, some resources on our blog that you can check out that'll have uh, some of the information, but it's a little bit more specific questions. So um, we're happy to reach out to you and, and get that question answered. Yeah, and I know that this isn't this isn't a fun thing to go through. Google does it to make sure that uh, you know your page can't get hijacked, which is awesome, uh, unless you're trying to make those updates to your page. So it sounds like that that what we should we should do is we should have you know I uh, might reach out to you directly um, and kind of get that fixed because uh, good luck with that. Uh, that that's going to be fun. Um, and it looks like that that's uh, that's question wise. I think that's where we're at. Um, thank you so much for, for joining us today. Um, I, I just wanted to make sure that we that everybody that we we you know uh, it's going to be a fun few uh, few weeks or a few months. Um, we empathize with everybody in the dealership and, and with everything they've got to go through. Um, we encourage you to stay safe and um, and uh, let let driving sales or podium know if there's anything that we can do to help or you have any additional questions. We want to make sure that. That, that we can help you uh, with with any of the challenges that you're facing. So, um, Haley, Matt, thank you, and and thank you to everyone who attended this webinar. Thank and you, Bart. Bart. Yeah, thanks, guys. Sorry, it's a goofy way to end it, but but we 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 hope to see you on future driving sales webinars, and uh, good luck. Thanks.